And to kick off the second hour of our Friday's edition of the program, we have K Korea on demand. And today we're going to go into K travel. And joining us for the very first time in our program is YouTuber and traveler Ethan Moon. Ethan, uh, good to have you on our program. Thank you so much. I feel so privileged. This is, <laughs> this is like the first time I've ever, I'm ever doing radio. So You do a lot of YouTube, but this is the first time you're doing radio. But to tell us about yourself, man. I know you do. You have a, a very successful YouTube channel involving uh, traveling, right? Uh, I don't know. I can't say it's successful anymore because <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing more of my professional stuff out here. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But I started out in Thailand and I just... Wanted to share my love for traveling out yeah. here and wanted to show a different side of Asia that other people don't see. Yeah. So I came here and I tried to do that and the algorithm doesn't really like it. So I really appreciate you having me here to, yeah. Share. Yeah. So uh, tell us about your channel so that our listeners can start uh, subscribing and liking and uh, watching all your videos. What's your uh, channel called? Uh, it's called Live Travel Asia. Okay. Living and Traveling in Asia. All right, there you have it. So if you want to check out uh, Ethan's uh, channel, again, uh, he's been traveling all around the world. He's been covering uh, some of the great stuff. I know that, uh, you know, because your buddies, you were introduced through Austin. Uh, I had asked Austin, hey, listen, you know any traveling YouTubers that uh, would potentially love to be on our show? And, and uh, you know, he introduced me to you. And uh, I believe Austin was, because he was on our show last week, and uh, he was doing a, uh, a tour in Henam. You got involved with this? Did you, you just come back from Henam? Yes, I did. We just got back from Henam shooting sort of like a trailer for his tour. Okay. And one of the great parts is I get to try everything that he scouted. And okay. it's, it's just it's just amazing. It's like literally the best of everything. It's right, the best right. chicken I've ever tasted. It's the best hue I've tasted. So super excited to you know go again to actually do the tour. And I uh, hope people sign up for that. Yeah, yes. and uh, not to mention, I'm sure you guys uh, went on a, uh, the perfect time of the, uh, the year. It's fall season, right? I mean, uh, what, are you a big fan of the fall season? Yeah, actually. Uh, in Korea, I, honestly, I only like spring and fall. Yeah. I'll tell you this. I only like fall. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I only like fall. <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, coming from sort of Southern California. Okay. And I, I used to live in Kenya as well in Africa, but I'm not used to like this humid weather. Okay. And I thought I might like summer because I'm watching Japanese anime and I'm like, oh, you know, like all the lush greens. But when you actually experience it, it's, it's not that great. And winter is, yeah, I mean, I like going snowboarding and such, but if you're staying here constantly... Uh, it's it's hard on your joints. I literally have issues with my joints. <laughs> and uh, we're going to find out why his joints are in terrible conditions because it actually goes into uh, the topic that we're going to be discussing. And so, you know, we, we had our meeting uh, before you were set to join us in our program and you were talking about different things that you want to talk about. And one of the things that our writer had pitched out is maybe why don't you introduce places that you want to introduce during the fall season and one of the reasons why his knees are so bad is because he likes to go hiking in mountains. And so you're going to be actually introducing some of the best mountains, in your opinion, also places that you want to recommend, especially uh, for maybe our overseas listeners who've been coming to Korea quite a bit uh, over the past few weeks now. And so what would be, let's go into directly into the very first mountain that you want to introduce to all of our listeners out there. Yeah, I mean, honestly, when we had this discussion... I sort of didn't want to introduce these mountains yeah, because I wanted to be sort of special and introduce something very special. But, but then, they're too special to skip over. Yeah. You, 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 <laughs> can't, you can't ignore them. And especially because when you said, uh, you know, these are overseas listeners. Yeah. And if I'm like, oh, you know, why don't you go to Wolchusan or something? Then I'm like, how are they even going to get there? Yeah. You know, so I, I picked three, but I think many of our listeners may not know about them. But the first one is probably the most famous one can you guess which one it is uh without looking at the script which i'm looking at right now <laughs> as number one <laughs> no no but all all joking aside i would say this is probably I, i've lived here for 14 years now mm. and i'm not i know that there are so many mountains here in korea but this is actually the one that always pops in my mind first mm. and it's the Seoraksan national park right the, the mount the Seoraksan mountain yeah yeah i mean it's sort of legendary. Yeah. I mean, I think we're both Korean Americans. Yes. So we've heard about this from our parents. Oh, absolutely. Right? And I don't know if I'm biased to think it's 
probably the most popular one amongst people living outside of mm-hmm. Korea. But yeah, Seoraksan National Park is probably the most iconic mountain. And I chose this one at, at first because, you know, if I'm going to recommend uh, a mountain to go to, I can't just recommend one mountain. So that's why I'm going to be recommending three. Yeah. And they're in different regions because when you get to Korea and you want to experience fall foliage, which is the whole reason you want to be hiking in the season. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket and say, you know, go to this mountain. I, then you might be disappointed because... Mm-hmm. Peak season is going to sort of die down in maybe a week or so. And Mm -hmm. if you're very unlucky, I've had situations where there's like a thunderstorm. And as soon as it peaks, it just wipes out the leaves. The leaves are gone. (laughs) Leaves are gone. Yeah. And that happens during cherry blossom season too. So, but whatever the case, um, Soraksan is the first one that usually sort of peaks. It's in Gangwondo. It's in probably the coldest area. Um, And... The other thing about Soraksan is that because it's so popular, it's relatively easy to get to. There's yeah. there's still tours and there's buses, you know, to still get there. So it's one that I would recommend. Yeah, and so I I like the fact that again, you're right. There's as much as we want to introduce some of the hidden gems of Korea, but also at the same time, because we have been getting a, a huge inflow of foreign travelers coming to Korea, accessibility is the other thing. And unfortunately, or, or fortunately or unfortunately, it happens to be the most popular uh, mm-hmm. destinations are the most easily accessible. So tell us more about this place, because I'm not a mountain person. I'm more of a beach person. So this located <laughs> in Sokcho, I would much rather go to Sokcho, the, uh, the, the ocean side, <laughs> rather than the mountain side. But tell us about this place and what's so great about uh, Seoraksan Mountain. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, when I first heard about this place and I was traveling all over Korea one of the reasons I didn't want to go there is because it was so hyped I was like it might disappoint me okay but I'm like as a travel youtuber I have to at least go there to you know make my judgment right right and I could see why this appeals to many people because you don't realize until you actually come to Korea and you go to their national parks just how big it is Mm -hmm. because I'm from America you know and we have really large national parks. <laughs> the Yellowstone National Park. Yeah, and I know that Korea is like not even the size of Texas. So I'm like, oh, a, a mountain. It's just going to be some small little thing. And I go there and I'm like, wow, what? look at all these trails. They, they have so many trails. Right. Because Koreans have a different sort of uh, uh, way that they do national parks. Mm-hmm. It, it's not... It, they like to spruce it up with nice little steps and staircases up, you know, rocky cliffs and such. It, it It's not like Yosemite where everything has to be natural. Right. You know? So they have a wide variety of trails, etc. And um, when you go to Saraksan, because it's one of the most popular national parks, there's just such a wide variety of these trails. Yeah, and I, from what I understand, uh, each trail has like a level, right? So if you're maybe yeah. a, a newbie hiker like myself maybe or have bad knees like yourself, you mm. want to kind of use the uh, the, the easier trails. Mm. Or if you're an advanced uh, hiker, you use maybe uh, you take the, the more advanced route. But there's so many trails out there. Mm. Is there anything – because you go, and that's the other thing that, I, and this is my bias once again, and probably one of the reasons for why I don't go to the mountains often mm. is because I went to the mountains once. Mm. I've gone hiking once <laughs> in my life, uh, and it was as expected. It was just a lot of trees and nice scene, and that's it. <laughs> but with the Saraksan Mountain, there's other things to check out other than the fall foliages and maybe the sky and the insects and the birds and stuff like that. Is there, there's a, a Buddhist temple that you can check out. Uh, Seoraksan does have Buddhist temples. Okay. Um, there's actually the Buddhist temple. I don't want to spoil it, but this one isn't the one that I would say is the best one to okay. check out. But they have a cable car. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So this cable car is fantastic because I literally, in the video that I shot, I went there with uh, an army veteran. Okay. Who had serious knee problems. He, he was just, even just sleeping, he couldn't sleep because he had issues with his yeah. knees and legs. And this guy's like, you know, 
before my knees get any worse, I want to check out s o r a k s a n and the fall foliage. Mm-hmm. And we went there and we went up this cable car. So it takes you mostly up there. Yeah. And then the, I think it was like five to 10 minute hike. Even he could do it. Okay. Yeah. And once we got up there, you're still relatively above on this rocky sort of, it's not a complete cliff, but it's just like a big rock, sort of like half dome. Mm-hmm. And you look i n all around you and there's fall foliage and you see sort of like a 180 panoramic view. It's a crisp air just coming at you. Man. I'm just like, you know what? I, I see the appeal of this. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to sugarcoat it and say this is, you know, the most unique experience I've had because I've climbed, you know, dozens of mountains. And, and there's definitely other ones that I experience that I enjoy more. Mm-hmm. But for this guy that had a knee issue, this was just magical for him. Yeah. Because there's nothing else that could get him there. It's, again, you... There is a reason for why people, so many people go to this particular Mm -hmm. place. And uh, one of the things that you want to do, and again, I don't think there's a whole lot of uh, maybe uh, mountains where they actually have cable cars. Mm -hmm. Uh, Namsan Tower does not count, ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) as a mountain you can climb with a cable car there. But uh, Saraksan Mountain, definitely a place to check out here. Uh, Let's go to your second pick for... Maybe a, a, a mountain that uh, maybe all of our listeners should check out. So what do you have for us? So the next one is Pukansan. All right, yeah. Pukansan Mountain. Yeah. Very close. Yeah. I mean, this is a mountain that I've never heard of until I actually sort of started traveling here. Oh, really? Yeah, which is, which is surprising because I saw some statistic that it's like the number one favorite mountain of Koreans if they voted. Yeah, so it's also, I guess, you talked about access, you know, being accessible, right? Yeah. And being that it's, it's not in Seoul per se, but just outside of Seoul. Well, I would say it actually technically would be part of Seoul. It's I like, think it is because I literally did a video yeah. where the Seoul Tourism Organization, the government, yeah, yeah. has a free like, gear rental place for foreigners. Oh, wow. To, like, you, you just need to register and they give you the black yak, which is like Korea's <laughs> top you know, hiking they, gear. They give you good stuff. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they, they have a locker for you to go there and you know, rent it for free. And they give you hiking shoes because... What a lot of people don't realize is Korea mountains are are sort of dangerous. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, They say, you know, Korean hiking shoes are the best because it's designed for this. It's rocky and yet a little gravelly. Mm -hmm. So it it could get very dangerous. That's why they have all these steps and everything, these safety features. Right, right. Yeah. And before they developed Pukansan, I heard there's like quite a lot of people that died there. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, they have that available and, um, Pukhansan surprised me not only because, you know, I know that there's mountains, Korea is 70% covered in mountains. Yeah. So anywhere you look are mountains, but this is, this is in my opinion, the hardest trail I've done in Korea. And it's interesting you say this because yeah. a lot of people who even some of the more advanced hikers out there, mm. they say it's. Very, very advanced. Mm. And the reason why they don't think it's advanced for first timers is because mm. it's just in Seoul. And yeah. when you think Seoul, yeah. it's not a mountain area, it's <laughs> yeah. a big city. So it's for all the newbie uh, hikers out there. They can check it out. But no, Pukansan Mountain happens to be one of the more elite courses when it comes yeah. to uh, hiking, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that was one of the reasons I was sort of timid about. recommending this yeah because it is one of the harder trails and for you to get to the peak there's no way to get there without it being not difficult yeah it, it's like you know yosemite has that half dome where you're walking up with that rope yes this is a similar situation towards the top okay yeah i, I mean there's a lot more safety features and such but um i, I think This, this is the hardest one because the, the one that I heard is the hardest is actually Dinosaur Ridge in Soraksan, mm-hmm. which they say it takes like two days or you got to leave at 3 a.m. It's so hard that I, I, I'm afraid to even attempt it. Right, right. But this one I attempted. It's the hardest one. And, uh, but it's just amazing. It's so breathtaking. And um, my dad's friend is just this avid um, hiker that basically hiked the p e k d e m y o n g s a n g and walked across Korea and everything. So he took me on this secret trail towards the back end on the ridge. And it's just like a rocky ridge. And 
you know, you're looking left and right and you're tiptoeing and sort of balancing on this ridge and walking down this whole thing for like 10 kilometers and eating the best Pyongyang naemyeon. But it, it is <laughs> it, it is like as authentic as you can get. Right, right. And, and you can get there by the Korean subway. So it's like the Seoul Metro. So it's just an amazing. How yeah. long of a hike was that from the bottom at the base to the top of the Pukansa mountain through the trail that you particularly took? I know that we started like around 9 or 10. Okay. And then we got kimbap and then we went up to the top and then we had kimbap break like again. You know, the <laughs> I, I hope people know what kimbap is. No, no, of course yeah. Be, yeah. Yeah, kimbap break and then uh I think around 12 we started heading down back towards the back which is a long way and that was I want to say like five, six hours. Because by the time we got down, we ha- were having dinner. Okay. Which is Pyongyang Nengmyeon. Yes. <laughs> and, but I did that in the summer, which is... Oh, it's, it's hard. It, it kills you. Okay. So yeah. three plus five and so like eight hours to the top and then going back down, there's more time going. And, and you sh- this is the thing that I want to point out because mm. I remember when I first came to Korea 14 mm. years ago, mm. my dad uh, lived in uh, Daegu and there's a, uh, a, a famous... Mountain. I forget the name of this particular mountain, but at the top there's like a, a very famous Buddha statue. But uh. we went up, and you know, I'm twenty. I was like twenty one years old, uh. twenty two years old, uh. and I'm, you know, super healthy and slim. Uh. You know, not, not like what I am right now. <laughs> now I'm cruising through the top, right? Uh. And my dad's going, "You're making a big mistake uh. because by the time I got to the top, yeah, I've." My legs were wobbly, uh, and then what, going down, it was really difficult yeah, for me. Yeah, because I, I've used my energy and my legs, and uh, we got tired and uh, got wobbly, and that's when it also gets very dangerous. And I know some people out there they like to drink makgeolli when they go up to the top, and I think I think is a very dangerous thing to do. Yeah. Uh, coming especially when you need to come down, right? And so, it's this is one of those things that you really need to watch out because. Yeah. Yep. Kids don't do what you see other Koreans do because they're yeah. hardcore, you yeah. know, like they say hiking is Korea's national pastime. And it, it, these ajumas and ajushis are just next level. Yeah. I don't know how they do it. Yeah. And yeah. even them, I mean, I don't recommend it because all the accidents that uh, take, take place in mm. these mountains are mm. because of drinking reasons. I mean, they, they, mm. I, I understand that, especially when you go to like Pukansan, mm. there's a lot of like chuns. Yeah. There's a lot of, you know, places that sell makgeolli. And mm. so it's very tempting. But mm. do it after you come down and enjoy it afterwards. Let's jump into our final mountain that you want to introduce to all of our listeners. And you've mentioned this particular place during our initial meeting. I have, I'll tell you this, Hmm. I have never heard of this place. Really? I've never heard of this place. Yes. Well, see, that's, I was sort of curious about that. Maybe I'm biased. Yes. Because this is a special mountain to me because my grandfather is from Cheongup, which Nejangsan is. Yeah. And um, and uh, Cheongup is in the Cholado province. Cholado, North Cholado province, and you know, I, before, like I like Thailand. That's why I was there for seven years. Yeah. And whenever I visited my grandfather, he's like, "You need to go see Nejangsan." And then he's like hyping it up. He's like, "This is the mountain that all Koreans know is the best." <laughs> and I'm just like, you know, what, what, what's going on here? But. Um, I, I ask other people, but I might be biased because the Koreans I generally know are my family. Yeah, and, and they're, they're from, from Jolado. <laughs> so they're like, yeah, this is so I, I, I'm curious. But I recently asked, I was in this Henam tour and I'm with this trekker that yes. has a YouTube for Koreans that just treks and he's trekked all over Korea. And I'm like, what do you think about Nejangsan? Is it the best fall foliage mountain? And he said, yeah. Oh, he said that, yeah, Nejangsan is literally what I would consider fall foliage habitat and it's perfect because according to you the best time to see the autumn foliage for the Dejangsan is late october to mid-november mm. which falls into right now we're still at the beginning of mm. uh, november and it's still time to see some of the best foliages but what makes it so special because i know you were on this you know project to mm. check out all the the famous uh, mountains of korea i know it stopped short because of your knee problems mm. and so forth but you kind of pinpointed as I you said I have to introduce this place and I wanted to hear it what makes it so special from the Soraksa mountain the the Pukansa mountain that we uh, we talked about uh, even the Hallasa mountain <laughs> that's very much famous over in yeah, Jeju what makes this place very uh, so near and dear to you aside from the fact that your family's from here uh, I mean honestly it has to do with that so I, I'm sort of biased so I'm trying to be unbiased here mm-hmm. uh, but Nejangsan has a different vibe mm. 
Okay. So Seoraksa might be your typical Korea mountain, same as Bukhansan, where yes. it's got these rocky edges, and you're like seeing it, and you're like, "Wow, that's that's Mochiso, you know? That's that's so so amazing. It's just it's rough and tough." Yes. But Nejansan has this it's, it's sort of like a it's nurturing just, kind of vibe. It's simple. It yeah. It, it's it's big, but it it just it just you're in you're a mother's womb. You know? <laughs> so they say th- this trekker basically summarized it like this too. He's like, there's some mountains that are better if you look at it from a distance, mm-hmm. but there are also some mountains that are better when you're in it, in it and you're looking up. And just you're gonna see the most amount of fall foliage here. Yes. And fall foliage is very. It depends on the temperature. So Soroksan has these big temperature swings, so the peak is much shorter. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas Nejangsan is the mountain that's going to have not only the most but the longest peak time. Yeah. So you're just going to see this vast ocean of red and bright yellow. So I think that's why. Mm. All right, there you have it. So for our listeners out there, we showcase or we introduce three mountains. Nejangsan is his personal. Uh, favorite out there. Ethan, I want to thank you very much for coming in every month. Uh, you'll be show, uh, telling us and showing us uh, places to visit here in Korea and maybe hidden gems as well. Thank you very much for this. Have a safe rest of uh, your weekend and next, really looking forward to uh, meeting you next month. All right, guys. Take care. You can listen to Korea Now with me, SJ Lee, by downloading the Arirang Radio application or tune in online by visiting www.arirangradio.com. So make sure you tune in Mondays through Fridays, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Korea time.